Hi, good evening, everyone, all lovers of the anthropologists and theater lovers everywhere. April J. Barber here with the anthropologists and going live an interview tonight with myself and the lovely Michelle Washington about James Maud Allen, who was featured in our play that we recently did, um, No Pants in Tucson. I know you all saw it. Thank you. Thank you. Love it. Um, we'll get started. We'll be discussing tonight um, both of our approaches to James Maud Allen, um, a little bit of inspiration, and then some new updates and some fun stuff coming your way. Um, so we'll wait. Let's see. Adding Michelle to the... Yes. I think I'm doing this correctly. Aw, thank you for the waves. Thank you for the love. Um, there she is. How are you? Hey, girl. How are you? It's good to finally meet you. Yes, very good to finally e meet you as well. Yes, yes. I'm so excited about this conversation. Um, I saw No Pants in Tucson on demand, and it was beautiful. I loved it oh, truly, God. and I loved your take on um Maude or James Allen. Thank you. Oh, no. So lots of love tonight. So I saw To Be Seen, which was your film that you did. Um, you amazing, beautiful woman. So you played the lead role and you created the film. It was really a work of art. And I love all of the interpretations. It's, it's like anything when you take a, um, an idea and you, you formulate it and you express it in your way, you get nothing but beauty all the way through and so many different interpretations. Um, so thank you. For the love and the support. Um, I do have some questions if I can just dive right in, yeah. if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so what did you want to say? I think I understood from the um film. It was it was it was romantic mm -hmm. in, in a way, which I thought was really awesome because I think most of the time when we think about history and we think about struggles and we think about pain and it all becomes um, very rough and very sort of difficult. But I felt like with yours, it was very romantic. It was very beautiful. But what, what was it in your film to be seen that you wanted us to, to take away, or at least that you hope that we felt? Absolutely. Um, I think the main thing that I wanted the audience to feel was that um, anyone, regardless of race, gender, class, etc., can do whatever they want as long as they put their mind to it. It doesn't have to be um based upon where you come from how you look your clothes especially women um how you say that i made the film be romantic i kind of really like that dreamlike state yeah because when i was doing further research um there's this book called i think masquerading in male attire and i forgot the author but that's where okay. most of my information on mod slash james allen um it just she under she she wore male, male attire as it says like in the book but no one ever suspected her sex yeah so she could have been wearing like a blazer uh pants shoes but she might have had curly hair and red lipstick or something like that or a full face of makeup so i kind of wanted that dreamlike state to be in it um so yeah for reasons like that very lovely um so the the paisley jacket I loved in your film, like I was, it was, I loved it. I was like, yes, that says it all. Um, and so please tell me, because when you're going through costumes and ideas and there are things that pop out to you, how did that pop out to you and what did it say? Mm. Um, okay, so we only had two weeks about like with planning to shoot the film, which yeah. was, it was a challenge in itself, especially to gather uh, my production crew, which consisted of four people and myself. So having that just happen so fast, um, the costume designer, Shaughnessy Hill, she worked alongside me heavily in regards to that. And I trusted most of her um, picks on the styles and the distinctive wear that every scene uh, Maude had on. Um, but the jacket, because, like I said, she said no one ever suspected her sex. She could have had on a blazer with uh, flowers on it or pants with hearts or ladybugs or something of that nature still, even though it was in male attire. And I kind of yeah. wanted to give the sense of 
um, Vogue into the film, incorporate okay. modern pieces. Okay. So. Okay. I get that. And it was very much uh, t um, fashion, fashion inspired, yeah, I'd say. Truly. And, and express. Yep. Yep. No, girl, you did it. You did it well. Thank you. Um, thank you for that. So thank you, Melissa, Masquerading in Male Attire. The author is Carrie Seagrave, if I'm saying that correctly. So yeah, great resource to the anthropologist during this time um, as well. And for those of you that do not know, James Maud Allen is featured in No Pants in Tucson. Um, very quickly, um, grew up, um, was born a woman and upon entering high school, decided to dress as a male to um, allow her to receive more resources and um, for more success in life. But I'm not going to give you any more than that. You can tune in to us on demand or you can watch Michelle Washington's lovely film to be seen if you want more information. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. Now. Oh, no, go ahead. I was going to ask a question. Nope. Shoot, girl. So. I want to hear your approach on how you portrayed um, Ma slash James, what was going on in your head, the process of it. Sure. So when I was given the research, um, I felt that it was, I wanted to be careful. Um, right. I wanted to be careful. I didn't want to make, um, it was, it's, it's really nerve wracking when you're um, trying to tell someone else's story. Right. Um, it's it's delicate it's it's so sensitive and it's private and i didn't want to make a gimmick of it so we were very careful oftentimes we're in a very fortunate position to um laugh at things that have happened and how absurd these laws were and how silly it all seems um but at the time of course going through them it, it probably didn't feel that way so i had to sort of find that balance without making it too grim um and that's what i tried to do i wanted to play it honestly um i felt that uh, James Maud was quite practical mm -hmm. in, in her decisions. This wasn't for fun. It mm -hmm. wasn't to make a statement. It was just to survive. Yeah. And and that 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 comes from a, di a very different place. And so I wanted I wanted that to come across. Um, and again, um, as things unfold, I wanted that to be clear. And the impact of that to be clear was it. Uh, an unfortunate absolutely and how things unfolded but i didn't want to harp too much on that i wanted to harp more on on her resilience and her practicality his i apologize so yes it was that was kind of how i approached it i didn't want it to be too too sort of grim um but i wanted to pay homage to to him so yes thank you no I, I thought it was a beautiful performance and i loved how you portrayed um him especially how you said you wanted to share resilience and not focus on um i guess you can say the the core of it in a way yeah um, how was your process your thought process because you know as, as i didn't mean to interrupt you but um for me i was wearing so many different hats so how was it just to hone in in the little information that we did receive about Maud? what did you um, well, luckily, uh, Melissa and the lovely Mariah did all the legwork. Thank you for the research. Um, so when we got it and we began devising, it was, um, we started at the beginning. What what was a day in the life like? And how was she impacted or he impacted? And, and the relationship between him and his grandmother um, and going to school and working and just trying to, to stay um as practical as possible in the moment as possible without adding too much fluff or um, taking away from his story. We wanted to, to stay true to all of that. And Melissa did such a beautiful job of that in the script, um, taking with what little we had and, and turning it into, yeah, what, what you see in the show, which is, is honestly breathtaking. The writing is, is so well done um, without it being a gimmick or, or making a joke of it and still being very um, honest about what's happened. And so I, I wanted to, to follow along that path um, in, in the devising process. And she allowed us to, to do what we wanted. Right. Um, we had several exercises and that made it really easy um, um, to pull from my own experiences in order to express um, how, how we interpreted what what this would look like what a day in the life of james maude allen's life would look like when when she when he goes to the hospital 
and all of that. Yes, it was, it was, it was rough. It was good. It was deep, and, and I love it. I loved it all, um, especially the process. So thank you. No, of course. I I, I loved watching it. Um, how was? What do I say? Your rehearsal process outside of the theater. How did you yikes from yourself? <laughs> no, it's always that. No. no. It was fun. Rehearsal was wild. It was right. super fast. Um, thank you, Melissa, for, for adding. Um, the clothing really does mm. absolutely bring to life um, James's story. And I, I don't want to take apart from that. Yes, how it can be described in gender and personality. You're, um, of course, you're right. Um, this is your work. So <laughs> thank you so much, Melissa. Um, the rehearsal process was quick. Um, but we, because of going from the devising process into the rehearsal process, it felt natural. Right. Um, and it was, it was quite smooth. Um, and James Maud was one of the characters that was steady because not all the characters made the cut. Mm. Um, and not the cut as in their stories weren't heard or, or, or like that at all. I don't want to detract from that. Um, but what we wanted to include and, and which stories and why it was so important. Um, and so with James, I... I got to spend some time with James Maude Allen and that it made it important because then I was able to build, build on what we had devised from the research. And so that process from the foundation, I had a really good foundation to start from um, and a lot of things to inform the character, like Melissa said, um, the hat was huge, right? The hats, um, the suits, um, all of these things that would inform your movements, would inform um, how you're treated how how yes all of that um which is what we needed that's how we work today that's how we move today um a lot of what we do is uh, reflected on how we look how we dress and whether or not we are respected and how we are respected so thank you very good question yeah, of course of course <laughs> um yes melissa thank you this is why we launched no pants digital <laughs> so that you can all um, see that and, and we can tell even more stories. So please, the digital platform, they are great stories, um, especially they're, um, about the Chinese immigrant. I apologize, the name uh, escapes me, but that was lovely, Michelle's um, film as well. Um, there was a movement piece, yeah. a lot of really, really lovely work that people have poured their hearts into. So I encourage you all, take a few minutes, take a Netflix break when it warns you and asks you whether or not you wanna continue watching get on the anthropologist's digital platform and, and watch something cultural. <laughs> All right. well, it, it, um, go ahead. I was saying, I love how we all um, did something different. Um, like you said, we had a song, we had a short film, we had a movement piece, and then we had the in-person finale. I think that's, we all kind of had the same, we were all working on the same project with different concepts and visions. So I think that's really important to know. Absolutely. Well said. Well said. Um, and it was very enlightening, um, sometimes heartbreaking. Yeah. Uh, and I know that's the nature of the beast, but it was, I enjoyed it. I loved every step of it. And of course, making new connections, meeting new people. This has all been great. Um, so I'm going to wrap it up. I won't take any more of your time. I know you are a busy woman. Um, just some quick announcements before we go. Join us on Monday the 13th at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time live on YouTube for episode four of Resetting the Table, where we, where we discuss finding stories and um, archival gaps in, in stories. Um, you can join artistic director Melissa Machido in conversation with our dramaturg Linnea Valdivia as they examine the gaps in historical archives and how they uncovered the voices of women of color and non-gender conforming people in the 19th and 20th centuries. And it's a really good and unique opportunity to go deeper into the lives um, of the historical figures that we examined in No Pants in Tucson, um, the anthropologists' research and devising methodologies, all of that. Um, we will have live ASL interpretation uh, provided by Inclusive Communication Services. And a big thank you to Supermajority again for um, our sponsor, one of our biggest sponsors. We do appreciate that as well. Um, if you have any questions, shoot them in the chat. Hope to see you all again soon. Again, check out um, link in the bio to our on demand, No Pants in Tucson. You can see that until the 15th. Um, thank you again, Michelle, for your time. It was so lovely to e-meet e you. <laughs> of course. Is, no, loved your work. 
too. Get out there. See Michelle's uh, film. She made it herself. Lovely film where she sees um, called To Be Seen that features um, James Maud Allen, who was also in No Pants in Tucson, um, represented by myself. So you can see it all on your own, both films. <laughs> yeah. So have a lovely weekend. This was great. Thank you so much for joining me, Michelle. And <laughs> I will see you again. We will cross paths again. I'm sure. I'm sure. You have a lovely evening, guys. And nice meeting you, April. You too, Michelle. Bye.